Are you confused about cap and trade? Curious, but not sure where to turn? Well, let us try to help. Let's start with some background information. Like this, did you know that 95% of the electricity in Indiana is produced from coal? There's a lot of talk about cleaning up the environment, greenhouse gases, and cap and trade. Indiana's Partnership for Fair and Affordable Energy wants to help create a cleaner environment, but we want to do it in a way that doesn't wreck the economy or hurt consumers who rely on electricity produced from coal, like you. So let's talk cap and trade. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a colorless, odorless gas that is essential for life. Humans exhale carbon dioxide every time we take a breath. It's produced naturally through human activities, such as burning coal, gasoline, oil, and wood. Many scientists believe increasing levels of CO2 are harming the environment. That's why the government is trying to find ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Congress is proposing a cap-and-trade policy as the primary way to cut carbon emissions from coal. And since Indiana depends heavily on coal-fired power plants, the cap-and-trade policy is an issue that hits close to home. Cap is basically another word for limit. The government is going to place a cap on the amount of carbon dioxide electric utilities are allowed to release into the atmosphere. They will also decide how many carbon allowances or permits will be allowed each year. Allowances will most likely be bought and sold under an auction scenario. As cleaner electricity production alternatives are developed and commercially available, some utilities may not need all their allowances. Those utilities can trade or sell their additional permits to other utilities that need more allowances. All the while, the government will reduce the number of allowances available each year, further driving utilities to adapt new or cleaner fuel sources while driving the value and cost of remaining allowances even higher. Now, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of buying, selling, and trading of carbon allowances going on in this cap-and-trade story. So you may be asking yourself, who's going to pay for all this? Well, you are. Under the proposed cap-and-trade policy, power companies in coal-dependent states like Indiana will have to buy a lot of carbon allowances. This means the cost of production will go up. And when the cost of production goes up, the price goes up. That's the price you will pay each month when you get your electric bill. Now, there are really three ways this story could play out. In the first scenario, the government could pass the proposed cap-and-trade policy as it stands, and your electric bill will go up, up, up. Don't like that ending? Well then, there's always scenario number two. Congress could do nothing, in which case the Environmental Protection Agency has the authority to regulate greenhouse gases. If Congress does not pass legislation governing gas emissions, the EPA can step in and set its own rules. And who knows what the cost associated with that may be? Still not the ending you were hoping for? Then take a look at option three. Your Indiana Partnership for Fair and Affordable Energy believes there's a better way. A way that doesn't overburden you and your wallet. A way that protects the environment and consumers alike. A way that's fair and affordable. A way that gives Indiana electric utilities enough credits to protect consumers until cost-effective carbon control and other technology lessens the cost impact on Indiana consumers.